Hello and welcome to AutoInform online magazine Diagnostic Workshop. My name is Frank Massey and in this issue we're going to look at injector testing. There's a number of methods we can use, both voltage and current and resistance, so I'd like to explain the whole process of interrogation of component functionality electronically and also how to examine the actual schematics of the circuit diagram is a very important part of any component testing process. So we also want to look at that as well. I think we'll begin by, first of all, examining the actual um, diagram itself. And the vehicle that we're using in this particular feature is, uh, it's basically a, a Peugeot-based engine, although fitted to a Suzuki. And what we've established from the wiring circuit is that the injectors are individually wired, which is pretty much commonplace now with vehicles, whereby the ground supply and the power supply both emanate from the ECU. Now this is a common rail vehicle which means that the injectors are power driven. By power driven I mean that the power supply is switched rather than the ground and it's switched by discharging a capacitor. So in effect what happens is you get a very high flow of current in a very short space of time. Where that varies traditionally from perhaps older methods of, of driving injectors they were quite often ground switched where the ground was switched on through the PCM um, simply by turning a ground circuit on rather than the discharging of a device like a capacitor and that affected the way the current flow took place within the circuit so in our case now this particular type of driver circuit is now quite common both with petrol and with diesel engines main benefits of power switched injectors by driving it with a capacitor is that by introducing a high current very quickly the injector can be opened very quickly and the benefit of this is that the uh, the technical hydraulic zero in other words the, the point at which fuel physically becomes delivered into the engine is that much quicker you can also control the amount of current through the injector so the, the use of a, a very low ohmic value coil within the actual injector is also a feature um, and all of this of course improves the actual um, efficiency of fuel delivery the issue electronically has always been that uh, to actually operate the injector electronically uh, the event was always um, quite easy to achieve but to actually match the hydraulic event um, following the switching was, was the difficulty so we've examined um, the actual uh, circuit we're going to actually conduct our testing actually at the component end so let's have a quick look at the vehicle what I've done in preparation is remove the electrical socket I've rotated the socket to remove the twist the twist in the cables is to stop the effects of magnetic induction or RF these injectors do switch quite a high current around 17 18 amps so as a, a temporary measure I've separated the two cables I don't yet know which power all ground is at the moment it's not a, an issue I'm going to put a probe on each side of the injector first of all um, to establish the signal the event and then we're going to put an inductive current clamp around one of the cables to measure the current the other alternative of measuring this component of course is back here actually at the PCM now later in this edition we're going to look at the how-to and we're going to concentrate on how to strip the actual sockets to conduct PCM testing, pin testing at the PCM. In other words, the opportunity now of carrying out diagnostics on the vehicle has now become more challenging because of the limit, um, limitations of space, if you like, under the bonnet, actually getting to the component and actually getting the device, whichever probe or tool you're using, actually attached to the component. Quite often now, we're actually testing at the ECU. So we're going to be doing some uh, pin-out checks back at the ECU in the how-to um, introduction. Right. Um, as for the tools, standard voltage probe. We have a current clamp, which we're going to attach to the injector. And, of course, we have our two probes. Now, be very careful. Because there's around 17, 18 amps, delivered by discharging a capacitor we do not want any short circuits across this injector that would seriously damage the ECU very easily so 
whatever probes you use, make sure that they are insulated safely uh, from any contact with each other. So I'm going to place those probes in each side of the injector. And I'm just making sure that these probes actually do go alongside the cable. They do not pierce the cable at all. And I'm quite happy that they are not in conflict with each other. That looks good. And I think just a bit, just extra safe with this. I think what I'm going to do is just use a piece of rubber hose just to provide some physical separation. That, I think, just allow a little bit of uh, safety. Right, what I'd like to do next is explain the physical properties of this circuit because an injector, in effect, is a coil. And this coil could be an ignition coil, it could be an injector, it could be a solenoid. Um, vehicles use a number of devices which are, in effect, a coil. So the process of testing will not differ from this component to, say, um, a wastegate uh, control solenoid. So what I'd like to do is just draw, in effect, a very simple circuit. We have a power supply. We'll have a, a cable, a circuit. The device is a coil. Uh, the coil needs to be switched. I'm, I'm going to draw the um, the ground switched circuit first of all, and then we're going to do uh, a, a, a physical demonstration of what our vehicle represents. The PCM, the power control module, in effect in that circuit, that is a ground switch circuit. So we have a power supply to the device. The device will not have a complete circuit until the PCM connects that side of the device to ground, therefore current will flow through the component. We can check voltage supply here. We can check current here or here or here. Current can be measured anywhere in the circuit. So the advantage of current is accessibility, more opportunity. We can measure the voltage supply at that point. We can measure the event. Now the event, of course, is the switching on and off of the injector. So it would be a pulse or an event can be measured there. Um, so those are the opportunities of a traditional ground switched injector. Our injector, in effect, is permanently, that's the injector, permanently the injector is connected to ground and the power control module by discharging a capacitor effectively provides a power supply to the device. What can go wrong with the circuit? Well, it can be an open circuit, a break in the circuit at any point, of course. It's possible there is a short to ground. Um, it's possible the actual device itself um, becomes defective. The current in a good circuit, of course, should be totally controlled and used by the device. So. By measuring current, of course, and I've already made, made the point that current can be measured at any point in the circuit, current determines that both the power supply and the ground reference are correct in one measurement. So the benefit, once again, of current is not just opportunity, but actually guaranteeing that the entire circuit is correct. If, however, the current measurement is not correct, then we must then ensure that the power supplies, in our case, the power control module, and the ground references are indeed correct. So we're going to connect our probe to the injector, capture the event, and then we're going to connect the current clamp around any part of the circuit. In our case, we're actually measuring it at the component, as we've demonstrated on the car, and I can measure on either of the two cables to the injector the current path. All we need to determine, of course, is the polarity, which direction the current is actually flowing. And um, we can simply achieve that when we view the screen on the oscilloscope. So, the connection is a probe. 
The next thing is predictability. What sort of voltage to expect? Now, voltages can go quite high when you discharge a capacitor. So I'm going to assume 100 volts input, um, which should be enough. And I'm going to connect the probe to the injector. We have a ground reference directly to the battery. The current clamp needs to be switched on to a 20 amp range, which in our case, once again, predicting the amount of current 20 amps is enough. As to which way the polarity is, I don't know. We're going to take an estimated guess and put it around one of the cables. It doesn't matter which of the two cables the current clamp goes around, the current can be measured in either the power supply or the ground. And of course, both of those circuits do go back to this socket on the PCM. We're going to be doing some PCM tests later on. Connectivity is finished. We have um, the scope, channel one set. The second channel, which is measuring current, needs to be set for range. And I'm using voltage for current. Two amps is 20, tw uh, two volts is a 20 amp range. And you can see the slight discrepancy on the current clamp. So we need to just zero the current clamp. So we have a, a zero base reference, which is now good. Now at this point, obviously we need to start and run the vehicle to capture the event. And then I'm going to set a trigger to actually stabilize the event. So initially when you view this on the screen, it will be in free run. In other words, the event will not be timed or static on the screen. And we need to achieve that static um, image to be able to measure the current and the event very accurately. So if we can start the vehicle, now you can see two images in blue which is actual voltage and red in current. It happens the current clamp is the correct way around. We have a positive current direction. We can separate them like so. I'm just setting the, the zero reference accurately on the graduation. And what we need to do now is set a trigger. So I'm going to select a repeat trigger on channel B. And I need to move the trigger event within the image. So we've now captured an event. Now we've stabilized the event, we can shorten the time base to actually focus very accurately on the opening period of the injector. So I'm going to choose a one millisecond time base. There's a little bit of mistriggering taking place. So although I've set a stable trigger using current as the event, it wouldn't know which of those two events. That's the pilot event, and that's the main injector, fuel injected period event. The voltage, in actual fact, it doesn't tell us an awful lot. And because these injectors create, in effect, quite a high RF signal, you can get some very misleading events. If I go back to a longer time base, let me try and demonstrate this. That is the actual opening event. If we follow across, you can see it's just short of 20 amps, around 18 amps of current. This event here tops up the capacitor so that it is able then to discharge and fully open the injector on the next cylinder. So that's quite an important event. That is not a fueling event. This is the fueling event with a full 18 amps of current. But you can see with voltage, you get a very misleading picture. If you were to ignore current, you would not for sure know which the opening event was, only by looking at current. So we tend now not to concentrate on voltage, but to concentrate purely on current as an event with this type of injector control. 
So once again, let's zoom back into that. Back to one millisecond per division. Now we can see very accurately how the current is being controlled by the PCM. There's current control um, technology within the ECU so that the, the actual injector, the component, uh, isn't damaged. Um, and you can see that the current flow is correct. Common rail, of course, uses variable rail pressure as fuel control. There is, however, a very small electronically adjusted period for smooth running adjustment here. What happens to the effect is the current goes up to around 18 amps to open the injector. It's then very quickly dropped to a lower value of around 12 amps for any of the adjustment capability. Once the injector is open, and it's open very quickly, current is then removed um, by the current control circuitry within the ECU. So we have the pilot event and the main event. This is a fairly old system where there are two events only for fueling. On the very latest common rail systems, there can be up to eight events now, where you will have eight events, eight fuel injection events per power cycle on the very latest injection systems. This SSA just has two events, which is quite common for this variation of system. So uh, we can switch the vehicle off now. Another feature it's worth mentioning that when you use a trigger with a digital scope that the image, the last captured image, remains present on the screen. Um, that's one of the reasons why when you sometimes look for an intermittent fault, I would prefer to use free run or a non-triggered event. In our case, we're not looking for intermittent fault, we're looking for a basic circuit test, looking at current and looking at the actual uh, the voltage as well. So that technique, if you like, would not vary, although the current may vary from different devices, the actual um, process of checking this circuit would not vary. First of all, we identify which pins on the ECU relate to which component, and in our case there are actually three sockets on the PCM, and the socket is also identified clearly. So if we did want to actually conduct circuit testing back at the ECU, then we have the relevant pin references, the locations, the actual pin map. So this technique can be applied to any coil, be it ignition coil, an injector, a solenoid. The only difference, of course, from those components would be the amount of current flow through the component. But the actual process of checking a device now that uses current uh, as its control functionality is now purely down to current. We tend not to look at voltage unless, as I stated earlier, there's a problem with incorrect current flow, in which case we must then prove that the voltage supply and the ground reference is then correct. And of course also part of that check would also involve the resistance. So if we go back to the circuit and identify the pin locations at the ECU, we can then conduct a continuity test, taking into account the resistance of the entire circuit through the component back to the ECU. And of course, uh, we then have the three properties that will affect current. Voltage supply, ground reference, and resistance through the circuit. And that, of course, will all be done in uh, our other feature where we're doing some component testing back at the ECU. So that concludes the diagnostic workshop presentation. Um, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you in a future edition.